I need a haircut in the worst way. It's too much of it. Hello again, friends. I'm Amy Gimple, and welcome back to my channel, Amy Forever After. Before I dig into today's video, if you want any more background information about me or my fiance, when our original wedding was, or any of our postponement story, you can check out my previous video where I told our entire story about how we decided to postpone, and then the video after that where I basically went through an entire checklist, complete with a downloadable to-do list of every step that you need to take in order to postpone your wedding due to a pandemic. Quick change of scenery today, I'm actually filming from down the shore at my parents' beach house, so since this looks different, that is why. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about Kenny and I's wonderful wedding planner slash wedding planners that we hired and why we are so glad we made that decision. I'm going to start with why she was so great pre-coronavirus and postponement just from the get-go, and then I'll touch a little bit at the end about why we are even more thankful that we hired her given everything that happened once postponement decisions started happening. So from the get-go, Kenny and I were on the fence about hiring a wedding planner. My cousin actually took the time to reach out to me after Kenny and I got engaged to recommend her wedding planner and basically tell us why she was so glad that she hired her. My cousin and her husband really had nothing but the best things to say about this wedding planner and her husband, who was her partner in crime in her business. Um, they used her countdown package, which is where essentially she's just your wedding planner for the last three months of the engagement process. And she takes over when things start to get a little more hectic closer to the big day so that you don't need to worry about vendor communications, timelines, silly questions from people that you don't feel like answering, all of that good stuff. So my cousin personally said that hiring this wedding planner was the best money that they spent on their entire wedding and I was intrigued at the idea because my cousin and I had very similar wedding styles and the things that my cousin was stressed about were the same things that I was stressed about. The main thing being that we are Catholic and so we're having Catholic traditional weddings which generally requires getting ready at one place, uh, usually two different places for the groomsmen and the bridesmaids, and then getting both of those different groups to church on time at the same time, and then getting that big group from church to wherever the reception is happening. And sometimes there's another layer after that if you're having people stay at a hotel, getting them back at the end of the night. So for me, I knew that we were getting ready in two different places, bridesmaids and groomsmen and we were actually getting ready um, 45 minutes apart from one another and then we had to get everyone to church and then everyone to our reception venue which fortunately for us is also where our hotel is so that took one piece out of the pie but I was really really nervous about me being in charge of getting all of these people to the right places at the right time when I'm supposed to be relaxing and enjoying my day my cousin had the exact same concern and that is why she said that she was so glad that she hired this wedding planner. When we were trying to decide about meeting with this wedding planner or even considering paying for one if we were going to put it in our budget, if we were going to make that big leap, there were two big downsides to hiring a wedding planner. The more obvious one, cost. Technically you don't need a wedding planner to throw a great wedding. You can do it yourself, you put, can put the time in, you can do the research, you can dot your I's, cross your T's, make sure you're doing everything you're supposed to, and you don't need one. Plus, I also really, really like planning, so this leads me to my downside number two. I didn't wanna miss out on my own research, hiring my own vendors, making my own vision boards, doing all of the fun creative side of planning that I really, really enjoy, especially because I've worked in corporate events before. I know that I have some decent experience and I thought I could pull it off pretty well on my own. So I didn't know if I wanted to A, miss out on that process or B, pay for someone else to do it when I was pretty sure I could do it myself. So Kenny and I sat down and looked at our budget and basically we realized we had this last chunk of money left that could go to one of two things could either go to hiring a wedding planner or it could go to a videographer. Neither of which are quote unquote essential to throwing a great wedding, but both of these things are very, very popular right now. And I've heard a lot of brides say that hiring a wedding planner was the best money they spent on their wedding. But I've also heard a lot of brides and couples say that hiring a videographer was the best money that they spent on their wedding. So Kenny and I felt pretty stuck in this decision. Just knowing myself, and knowing that only two months into our engagement, I was already stressing about the logistics and already trying to make timelines when I hadn't even hired any other vendors yet, I was starting to lead towards the wedding planner. Just because the thing that stressed me out from the time we got engaged, still to this day, is coming up with a good timeline, making sure everyone gets to where they need to be, and making sure that day runs smoothly after all of those months of hard work go into it ahead of time. So I felt like I was leaning towards hiring the wedding planner over the videographer, Kenny felt pretty 50-50. He didn't feel really strongly either way. So we decided let's meet with this planner and her husband that my cousin recommended to us. And then after we talk to her, we'll decide if that's the route we want to go. 
So we meet our lovely wedding planner and her husband. They are the sweetest retired couple who do a handful of weddings a year on the side just because it's something that they love to do. And I think that is the sweetest thing ever. And that was one of the things that turned me on to our planner right away is this isn't their full-time gig it's not work they're literally doing it because it's something they love to do and they're doing it for the pleasure of helping couples and seeing beautiful wedding days take shape so right off the bat i knew i liked her and honestly probably about 10 minutes into our conversation with her kenny and i looked at each other with that look in our eyes that we're like yeah we're hiring these people i feel like this is something that we need to do i can't tell you how thorough that first conversation was they were so lovely they wanted to know everything that we already had planned anything that we were considering or vendors we had reached out to or things that we kind of wanted way off in the distance they wanted to know our budget exactly how much we wanted to spend on what and this was all before we even hired them and they were so thorough and had answers to all of our questions and clearly knew the industry and i feel like that's a huge important part of hiring a wedding planner make sure you meet them before signing any contracts because you want that good 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 gut feeling before hiring them. And that's true of any vendor, but I feel like a wedding planner, especially because you are taking your beautiful baby, your wonderful, entirely detail-oriented planned wedding that you spent months on and putting it in their hands so that you don't need to worry about it on your wedding day. You want someone you can trust. So we got that great gut feeling instantly. Plus we knew that my cousin and husband loved this couple and loved working with them. So we were pretty much instantly sold. So we contracted them for the countdown package, knowing that I could handle finding vendors myself. I could get the contracts done. I could work with the venue, do my tasting, make all of our decisions, just me and Kenny, we could handle that. But then I knew I was going to want her to take over towards the end so that I didn't need to worry about any of these logistics on the wedding day. So we contracted them for their countdown package and Right away, it was awesome. They have access to this entire online database that she and I could both access at any given time where we had all of my vendor contracts, our guest list, our rough working timeline, a budget calculator, anything I could possibly need. She had all of these things put together where both she and I could see it. So if there was ever a question about anything along the way, we both had access to it and we could figure it out together. She also provided awesome emotional support right off the bat. She would text me once a month just saying, hey, how are things going? Do you need help with anything? How are you feeling? Are you stressed? Are you still excited? Have you gotten this much done? Or maybe you should be a little bit further along with this. Even though she wasn't our full-time planner at this point, she was just keeping tabs on me and Kenny and making sure things were going well. And that was awesome. I cannot understate enough how wonderful that was in the early stages of planning when I still felt a little lost and wasn't quite sure what I should be doing when. And then when it came to a financial standpoint, even though we only hired them for our countdown package, I'm pretty sure their services paid for themselves within the first four months of our engagement, just because of the connections that she had. She was happy to recommend vendors for me to reach out to and contact, and then eventually contract whenever I wanted. So she actually was the person who found us our transportation vendor, um, the trolley that we hired for getting our bridal party around on the wedding day. And because she's familiar with them, they gave us a, a pretty good discount on the services. Plus, she has a partnership with Minted, who is an online stationery uh, company. Some of you are probably familiar. And so she just has a standing discount code that she can give out to anyone who hires her and her husband and their services that saved us a really, really good chunk of money on our save the dates and our invitation suites. So those two things combined, I'm pretty sure her services paid for themselves right then and there. So as far as the countdown portion went, um, my fiance and I's original wedding date was August 8th of 2020. And so my planner told me that she would take over with her husband right around Memorial Day. And that at that point, it would be hands off for me. All of the vendors would obviously be contracted and most of the decisions would have already been made at that point. But Going forward, from Memorial Day on, we would have our venue walkthrough where she would officially meet the venue coordinator at the reception venue, and we would walk through the property, make all final decisions about decor, how we wanted things to look, how we wanted the day to run, and then after that, she would make the timeline for all of our vendors, reach out to all of them, introduce herself, herself and her husband to all of them, and basically say, hey guys, I'm taking over for Amy at this point. I'm her planner. If you have any questions at all or need anything updated or any contracts rearranged or signed, whatever it may be, please reach out to me. And then she started working on the timelines and she would send them to all of the vendors. She would make a personalized timeline for mother of the bride, mother of the groom, bridesmaids, groomsmen. Everyone would know where they needed to be ahead of wedding weekend and she was going to handle 
all of that. And I can't wait to get to that phase next year because that is going to make my type A organized little brain so happy <laughs> to just have everyone know where they need to be and when and know that someone else has it under control for me. Can't wait. So as I mentioned, we never got to that stage. We never made it to the Memorial Day walkthrough because the COVID-19 pandemic happened, obviously, and I told the entire story of how we decided to postpone a few weeks ago if you wanna go back and check it out. But this is when, I mean, I thought that my planner and her husband had paid for themselves before, but this is when she really stepped up to the plate and I genuinely don't know what I would do without her, almost just from like an emotional support standpoint. She checked in with us every couple of weeks asking how we felt about the pandemic and then offering her own professional advice as someone from the industry about maybe when we should consider moving or when we should be worried, when we should sit tight, all of that good stuff. And she would just ask, how are you feeling? You doing okay? Can I get you anything? So it was great just to have someone who was looking after us while we were making this decision. Before we officially postponed, it was actually my planner's idea to prioritize our top vendors, which for us was church, venue, photographer, band, and reach out to them to get a backup date just on the calendar so that it was holding a place for us next year if we did decide to postpone. So she actually handled that original uh, communication with those vendors, with the exception of the church, because I'm a family friend of the church. But she reached out to our venue, band and photographer to introduce herself and basically say, hey, I would love to get a date for next year just as a placeholder on your calendar so that if and when we need to make this decision, it's easier. We just go, boom, we're moving it and it's done. And it was great to have someone in the industry be our advocate when it came to those conversations. Because not that I would expect any of our vendors to ever try to like pull a fast one on us or treat us unfairly, because I love all of our vendors and I you know, have a great relationship with them and I trust them. But I think it's a little bit different to have two people in the wedding industry who are both professionals talking to one another as opposed to me trying to talk to some of our vendors and try to figure out what is industry standard, what's expected, what's a normal request, what isn't. It was nice to have her sort of handle those negotiations. Fortunately, it didn't really require any negotiations. They were all happy to put the backup date on the calendar. But if anyone gave us a hard time, I knew I was happy having a planner who could sort of gauge those conversations for us. So then once we decided to officially postpone, she and I sat down and split up the list of our vendors and I handled half and she handled half. And again, all of this, as far as I'm concerned, is above and beyond what we hired her to do because she was originally just supposed to be our countdown coordinator, but she has done so much more for us and I'm so thankful. So she reached out to half the vendors saying, hey, this is when we're moving to, do you have availability for the new date? I did the same for the other half. And then as the contracts came in, I updated them and returned them but it just helped having someone to tag team it with, to split up some of the work, to make sure I wasn't missing any steps, to get it all done quickly and efficiently. The last thing she did that I was so, so thankful for was she made a new COVID to-do list of basically all of the vendors that we needed to make sure that we updated, things like moving rehearsal dinner reservations over, all of that stuff, whether it was something new that needed to be done or amending an old to-do list from my pre-existing to-do list when we were still getting married this year. She helped me merge our old to-do list and our new to-do list together so that now I just have one running long to-do list of the COVID-19 urgent items at the top and then our basic normal wedding planning checklist after it that got rearranged since our wedding is now next year instead of this year. So that was a really, really helpful process that we sort of tackled together, but it was nice having her there to make sure that I didn't miss anything, to make sure I was really covering all of my bases for the things that needed to be updated and in what order they needed to be done. To sort of wrap up this video, I know that hiring a wedding planner uh, isn't for everyone because they are an additional cost that isn't technically required to throw a great wedding. And I've been spending a lot of time uh, since I got engaged, talking to friends who are brides and grooms and different couples who have already gotten married. And one of the big things that I tried to ask a lot of them at the beginning of my wedding planning process was, what is the one thing you're so glad you spent money on? And what is one thing that you wish you had spent money on that you didn't? And a lot of common answers are either, I'm so glad that I spent money on a wedding planner, or I wish that I had gotten a wedding planner, even just a day of coordinator or a countdown coordinator. And after having one just for this process, I can start to see why. I had one friend who mentioned that she wished that she had gotten a coordinator because she felt like it was her responsibility to wrangle everyone on her wedding day. You know, she had to 
call out to all of her bridesmaids when it was picture time and she didn't want to be the heavy, she didn't want to be the person yelling at their friends to pay attention because come on we have to go do pictures or come on we have to go do this. But there wasn't anyone else to take over that responsibility before they got to the venue where there was a, ven a venue coordinator. So that responsibility fell on her and she said I wish there had been someone else to take that responsibility away from me. And then my cousin who proposed this exact planner to me sort of explained it like this. She said, not having a wedding planner, you're fine on your wedding day. It's like being the host of a really, really big party that you decide to throw. Throwing parties is really fun. You're still gonna have a good time, but the stress of being the host and the stress of knowing this needs to happen and this, then this, then this never really leaves the back of your mind. Whereas having my wedding day with my wedding planner, I would describe it as being the guest of honor at a party that is thrown in your honor. That I think is such a great way to explain the difference because you get to just show up on your wedding day, no worries whatsoever. You have someone else in charge of all of that, someone else to answer the questions, someone else to make sure everyone's where they're supposed to be. And you just get to enjoy all of the hard work that you've put into this for however long you were engaged. And then you get to enjoy that day with your fiance and focus on each other instead of focusing on everyone else in the mayhem associated with it. So having heard that description of why so many people are glad that they do hire wedding planners versus people who wish that they had hired wedding planners, and then pairing that with our own experiences, not just with the pandemic and the postponement process, but really with the entire last year that we spent with our planners, I am so glad that we hired them. And I definitely think that Kenny and I made the right decision for us. And a fun silver lining with this whole postponement thing, because you gotta look for the silver linings, you really have to find them. <laughs> now we have another year to save, so we are able to hire a videographer. And I'm glad that we're gonna get that too, but I'm glad that we hired the planner first, because this postponement process would have been a nightmare without her. And if we had decided to hire the videographer, we would have had a videographer this whole time. Great, so glad we hired one, but there wouldn't have been anyone there to help us with this postponement process. So I'm glad we made the decision we did and I'm glad that I've had her this entire time. And I'm even more excited to have her help next year when we finally get to that big day and she and I get to work together to put the finishing touches on our plans and finally get to experience what we've been waiting for for the last year. So that is it for my video today. Not quite as long as my previous ones, but I'm hoping to make them a little more concise and a little more specific to certain topics going forward. So if you have any topics you want me to talk about or any ideas, leave them in the comments below. Or if you have any questions about anything in this video or a previous video, something I may have glossed over or failed to mention, leave those below for me too. And if you're just jumping into wedding planning, I just wanna let you know that I'm just getting started with an Etsy shop where I'm going to be sharing some of the templates that I have personally made for my own wedding planning. Right now, there's a guest list template there for instant download where you can purchase it and download it straight to your computer and then you have a guest list template ready to go. You just need to plop in your guests' information, their addresses, yada, 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 and you're all set. You can use it to track a bunch of things, not just addresses and RSVPs, but also what events you're planning to invite them to, like shower, bachelorette, rehearsal dinner, so that you can quickly see how big your guest lists are for those different events. You can also track meal options, dietary restrictions, the age of your attendees, so you can track the little kiddos if they're coming, all of that good stuff. So take a look, and if you're interested, download it, save yourself some time. Thanks so much for watching, and just as a reminder, I do post new videos here on my channel, Amy Forever After, every single Sunday, usually around 11 a.m., so if you found this video helpful, definitely subscribe or check back in the future for more helpful videos, or you can take a look back at the ones I've already done to see if my experiences help you in your wedding planning at all. And just before I go, if you are dealing with wedding planning right now, whether your wedding was postponed by the pandemic or you just got engaged and you're trying to figure out what's going on for next year, I'm sending you hugs because it is a hard time to be a bride or a groom and plan a wedding right now. Keep your chin up and keep moving forward. I know it's hard right now, but just remember that no matter how long you have to wait, you will get your perfect wedding day. You'll get your happily ever after and you'll get to marry the love of your life, which is what it's all about anyway. So keep that in mind as you deal with all of these stressful times. So on that note, I am off. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next week.